Alright folks, just wanted to do a quick video on a knife that uh, I recently picked up about a week ago. And this is a Microtech Ultratech. It is their out the front model. This one is in partnership with MonkeyEdge.com. Uh, you can see the frag pattern is kind of a Monkey Edge thing. I've wanted to get one of these knives for a while and I just never did uh, for various reasons and when I saw this one come out I'm a big fan of, of uh, Monkey Edge and the frag pattern and I like green knives so when I saw this I had to have it. It has what's called their apocalyptic finish on it which is really just an aggressive stone wash uh, which is kind of cool you can see it on, on the hardware in the back because it makes it a little more resistant to scratches and dings and stuff like that in the knife. It comes in a uh, nice box and then here's some information about the specific model and then it comes with a little bit of an instruction manual product manual now, I've handled lots of Microtech knives but this is the uh, first one that I bought new and it comes with a product manual tells you a little bit about the knife how to how to maintain it and a registration card and a little bit about their warranty process one of the things I was surprised about is it says that uh, n right here Knives with blades that have been sharpened outside a Microtech factory repair department or by someone other than an authorized Microtech armor will not be covered under warranty. So uh, I'm surprised that with these knives, I could understand taking them apart, uh, but I don't understand that uh, you're not allowed to sharpen the knives. So anyhow, getting into to why I bought this, um, primarily I bought it because it's cool. <laughs> the blade is a little bit stiff. Um, it's gotten looser as I've opened and closed it a few times, but it's still it's still pretty stiff. But uh, I, I bought it because it's cool, and I would classify this knife as a uh, offensive defensive uh, fighting knife. It, it is a tactical weapon. Uh, it comes out with pretty significant force. Uh, it's razor sharp. I mean, let's see if I can find a quick piece of paper that uh, we can cut out. So I guess I don't need to sharpen it myself. But um, you know, it comes pretty sharp. With these out the front knives, you get a little bit of you get a little bit of blade play because there's no tang that goes into this. So this isn't a knife that you would buy to uh, carve wood or or, <laughs> or or cut rope or cut open a bunch of heavy boxes. I'm, I'm sure you could cut lots of stuff with it, but I, I wouldn't use it for that. Uh, and I'm also not going to use it to, to peel apples and cut up fruit and smear peanut butter on a piece of toast. Because uh, I don't want anything to get down into the mechanism. Uh, for me, it's really more of a, <laughs> you know... A, a, a toy, something to sit around and play around with, uh, or or carry it as a um, as a defensive weapon. It also has this uh, spike. They're calling it a glass breaker on there, but I think that a lot of times you've seen this uh, called a skull crusher. So anyhow, let me uh, get some stats about this knife and what it's made out of. The um, the blade material is actually Elmax, which is uh, a decent steel. I think that it's gotten a little bit of a bad rap. A lot of people were saying that. Certain companies didn't know how to work with LMAX, or when they were grinding them, they overheated their, their blades. So there's a, there's a bunch of drama around that. But anyhow, the overall length from the tip of the knife when open to the tip of the glass breaker is 8.5 inches. The uh, blade length is 3.5 inches. So you have a lot of handle here, but that's probably to hold things like springs and stuff in there. feels very comfortable in the hand, though. Uh, it's a little boxy, right, you'd expect, but it, it, it feels good. You can give it a good squeeze without it hurting your hand. Um, again, I don't think you're going to be using this for hours and hours of, uh, of use carving spoons and batoning wood uh, off in the wilderness somewhere. The blade thickness is an eighth of an inch, so it's got a nice thin blade profile. The, uh, the weight of the knife is 3.2 ounces, so it's very light, and it's aluminum handle here. It's made out of, in case you care, it's 6160 aluminum. Um, that really doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot to me. The fit and finish is pretty good. Microtech uses proprietary screws to hold their knives together, and I think that's to discourage people from taking them apart. Um, you have a little bit of a seam air gap there. Uh, I think I would expect that on a knife like this. I'm going to use two thumbs because this thing is still a little stiff. For carry options, this originally was on the other side, so I just took an Allen wrench and stuck it through these holes, loosened the glass breaker, Flip the clip around. I'm a lefty, and you put it in your in your left hand pocket. These are really nice because you can carry them right or left handed. Some of the other Microtech knives, like the Halo, for example, has a button on one side. It's actually on this side, so it wouldn't make a good uh, left hand carry knife. And then uh, when deployed, you have a pretty decent traction plan. There's some some 
I don't want to call it jimping, but it looks like some steps on this you could be used as a thumb ramp. And the frag pattern uh, really helps it uh, hold in your hand well. And then you have some, some milling down here, some, some a jimping here as well. So it has, it has a pretty good traction plan. Like I said, if this thing got wet uh, in the rain or something like that, I think that you would still be able to maintain a pretty good grip on it. Uh, the next thing I was going to talk about is uh, the value proposition of buying a knife like this. Microtechs are expensive. They're higher-end knives. And then this being a, a uh, dealer exclusive or limited release um, makes it even a little bit more pricey. This was about $30, $35 bucks more than the typical uh, going price for an Ultratech. Um, and it makes this knife uh, what I would consider relatively expensive. Um, again, I bought it. It's probably something I'll have for a long time unless I get jammed up with bills and have to sell it. Um, but I, I feel that it's worth what I paid for it, given the, uh, the quality of the knife, the materials that are used, and then it being a, a limited edition. Um, I think that you could probably find <laughs> a lot more knives at a lot lower cost that meet the same need as this knife, uh, which I would say is a defensive option. But um, I don't know. It's cool. It's fun. You pay a lot of money for the cool factor, and uh, I love... <laughs> I love the way that the that this knife deploys. It comes out with uh, a lot of noise and a lot of force. And uh, like I said, it's just a cool toy for me. So that's it. Thanks, everybody.